Hello, Boulder. If you want to know how a society treats their women and girls, take a look at sports. Equity in sports is, without fail, a reflection of equity in society at large. Take Saudi Arabia, for example. This is the last country on earth to allow women to vote just four years ago. Almost no girls play sports there, and girls actually couldn't even participate in physical education until a few years ago. On the other hand, we have Norway. So Norway has a woman prime minister in this blissfully equitable parental leave. Almost all girls play sports. Not surprisingly, players on their men's and their women's national soccer teams earn exactly the same amount. Imagine. It is a fact that more gender equitable countries win more Olympic medals than those with big gender disparities, even when you control for wealth and population size. It's not only the women who perform better, the men win more medals as well. At this day in history, we don't have a single country on earth that has achieved gender equity, not even those Scandinavians. Discrimination and rights violations are everywhere. We see it in the most flagrant displays, 33,000 girls becoming child brides every day, and in more subtle ways, deeply entrenched in the fabric of our society. Women are 47% more likely than men to suffer in car crashes just because the safety features weren't designed for them. Sport and play more broadly is not only a reflection of equity in society, but it can also be, conversely, this powerful lever of change to force societies to evolve. Over the past ten, two decades, I've worked in over 60 countries learning the genius of this strategy. The closest thing that I can liken it to is kind of a Trojan horse effect. It's seemingly innocuous, but secretly powerful. Girls get stronger in their bodies and their will when they play. They learn to lead. They get out of the house and into visible public space. They challenge gender norms without even realizing it. The attitudes of their dads and their brothers, of their imams and their teachers start to shift. Well, if girls can play and they can wrestle like boys, what else could they do? And because sport is seemingly this last bastion of masculinity, when you solve the problem in that domain, you crack open this potential for massive social change. It is not magic, it is intentional. It is what my colleague Dr. Judith Bruce calls guerrilla warfare. Guerrilla warfare is typified by asymmetry of the two sides, by surprise and unsuspecting tactics, by these small mobile forces that agilely move in concert with a much bigger goal. In India, the land of 1.3 billion of us, almost no girls play sports. The NAS Foundation is managing to get thousands of girls to play netball every day. They're not just teaching them to pass and pivot, but they're teaching them about money and gender. It's all code for power. In the north of Kenya, my friend Fatuma runs a soccer program for girls, all of whom experienced female genital mutilation. The community economic systems are completely tied to girls' marriage ability, which hinges on this practice. These girls are getting space to reclaim some semblance of control of their bodies. In the very high mountains of Gilgit, Pakistan, ranked one of the worst places to be assigned female at birth, these girls are not apologetically walking into their classrooms. They are jumping and they're spiking the volleyball and they are fully free in those moments. Well, what about in these mountains? We like to think we're progressive and bolder, but truth be told, gender is still a major barrier to rights in this community. Women earn 75% of what men earn. One in four students at CU will experience rape during her time there. Girls in Boulder are twice as likely to experience depression than their male peers, but they're less likely to play sports, which provide these well-evidenced protective assets against mental health disorders. One in three people in Boulder County is living in poverty, like Hayden said. And there's probably 20% of students that identify as students of color. When you take gender and you start layering in race and economics, this systematic discrimination intensifies. Now, imagine walking up to Bastille Crack in Eldo Canyon, and you see this girl, and she is chalked up, and she's climbing that route, and she's taking up your space on that precious crag. She's climbing out commands, She's getting stronger in her body and her will. She's challenging our narratives and learning to lead on and off the wall. What would change in her? More importantly, what would change in us? Is it possible that we could turn the dials of equity in our community? We are taking to the forest with our small mobile forces and our unsuspecting tactics. Join us. <laughs>